Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to check out how to play a G chord, and not just any old G chord. I'm going to teach you the G chord I wish people had taught me when I was first learning guitar as a little kid, because I struggled with G, man. I used to, like, I had to look for songs that didn't have G in it, because I just couldn't deal with it. I couldn't change to it. It was too stretchy. My fingers just wouldn't get along with it. And what I've discovered over the years is the way that I actually really play it nearly all of the time isn't the way that people teach it. And that doesn't seem to make sense to me. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the proper traditional one as well, just because I think it's worth you knowing it. But the, the two finger version that I'm going to teach you, I think is the one that all beginner guitar players should be starting off with and only learn the traditional one later on if you find a reason for it. And that if you find a reason for it is pretty important. So let's have a little look at our G chord. Now, this is the G chord I'm going to teach you. It just involves two fingers, the second finger playing the third fret of the thickest string. That finger will also mute the fifth string. Now, you probably wouldn't be able to not mute it unless you really, if you really angle your second fingers up like this and contort your hand, you might be able to get that fifth string open. But for most people, if you put your second finger on the third fret of the thicker string, that second finger is naturally going to lean over a little bit and mute the fifth string. And that's good. That's actually what we want. Okay. Then we've got an open fourth string, open third string, open second string, and third finger is going down. It's going to have to be quite on the tip there on the third fret of the thinner string. So just those two. Now I'm pointing my first finger out of the way. I wouldn't normally do that. It would normally just kind of hang around, but I want you to kind of see that it's just those two fingers. Okay, of course they want to be both right up next to the frets if you can. That's how you do it. Now the traditional G, the one that you'll find in nine out of 10 books, also includes the first finger down here in the second fret of the fifth string. So you get this. And, and it's a good sounding G chord. It's the way G chord's been played for a long, long time. But for me, this part of the chord is quite muddy, especially in rock guitar. It, I mean, that's a note that you definitely don't want. But even for acoustic guitar, I think that this sounds a little bit muddy compared to, you hear this one's sort of nice and crisp. If I add that note in, it's just, it's got a bit too much weight in the bottom end, for me, like the low sound. Off. Here's the finger on. For me, it's just a little bit muddy. It works okay in this environment where the, the guitar is nice and clean. We're not using any distortion. And like I said, it kind of works okay on acoustic guitar as well to have that, that first finger down, but I just don't think it's as good. And it's a lot harder to change to. If you're doing C to G, which is a really, really common uh, chord sequence, to get that first finger all of the way to there, and then second finger has to be kind of up far, you know, high enough over to get that note there underneath the first finger. It's it's pretty tricky. It's it makes it for a really difficult chord change, and if you just restrict it to those two fingers, there's still a bit of a jump from C to G, but it's a lot easier. And it's pretty to D chord again. First finger just has to lift off, and it's. It really is so much simpler, and I think better sounding as well. If you want to learn the one with your first finger down as well, there are times where that chord might sound better. Okay, it's still a G chord. It doesn't change the name or anything. It's just a, one of the low notes has doubled. So this note, the open second string is the note B, and this note here with the first finger is also a note B. So we've still got all the same notes. The G, B, and D notes are all still present in the chord. We're just muting that one in that lower register, and I think that's a better choice for beginners most of the time. Now, when you go through to do your practice, I want you to make sure that you're muting that fifth string. So you start with your hand off for the core perfect exercise. You're going to put the fingers down, strum, pick the notes out one at a time, making sure the fifth string is muted, okay? If it's ringing out, that means that you're, that you're using too much of the tip of your second finger there. So you want to lay that second finger back down just a little bit. So that one's muted. If it's laying down too flat, you're going to mute all of the other strings too. So it does still need to be kind of up, but you want the C string to be open, G to be open, B to be open. If the B is muted, it's almost certainly going to be the tip of that third finger sitting up a little high. Okay, so make sure that the third finger is nice on point and not touching the, the B string. 
Otherwise, I don't think you're going to have too much trouble with this chord. It's, it's, the two-finger version is way easier than I was anticipating. Because I, I always, you know, G chord, like, oh, that's the scary one. I was in my left-handed adventure. I knew that G chord was coming, and I was a bit, you know, this is going to be a bit tricky. But you know what? It wasn't anywhere near as bad as I thought doing the two-fingered version than the full three, you know, traditional grip. It, it really makes such a big difference. I'm sure you're not going to have any trouble with this G chord either.